to the neighbor facing terror charges in the massacre in San Bernardino. Enrique Marquez. He is the one who was accused of calling 911 just hours after the shooting and admitted Saeed Farouk used his guns in the attack. That's according to a newly released court document, uh, including actual transcripts of the call where he also told the operator Farouk was the shooter. The feds say the neighbor has admitted he and Farouk had planned terror attacks in the past, but never carried them out. Let's bring in our legal panel, Mercedes Colwyn, Fox News legal anal analyst, and David Schwartz, defense attorney and former prosecutor. Okay, so Mercedes Marquez not only brought the guns to Farouk, he bought the guns for him, okay? Right. He, in fact, also bought the smokeless powder that Farouk used in building the pipe bombs. Now, court papers say that he and Farouk were also involved in, in radical and violent Islamist propaganda and bomb making together. I mean, does, does the prosecution need any more to convict this guy or at least to properly present him as guilty in, uh, in aiding this terrorist attack? Uh, great points. And that's exactly what the prosecutor's saying. How many, we're coordinating so much. These guys were coordinating back in 2007. That's when Marquez started to go and started to read about the jihadists, talk right. about the terrorists. That's when they started planning. In fact, that there were, they had pre-existing plans to go and have attacks at a college and also other attacks at other various parts in the country. So where is it? The prosecutor is looking at this and saying, at this point, the admissions on the 911 tape, and what about the Facebook postings where he says, it looks like I may have been planning about this terrorist issue. Yeah, I mean, maybe David, I go into prison. on the 911 call, you can barely make out exactly what he's saying, but basically Enrique Marquez says that his neighbor, Saeed Farouk, was the shooter in the attack. Um, I can't imagine what the operator was thinking, that he was in fact saying this. And he said that bleeping, bleeping person, okay, so it starts with F and A, I right. don't know if you can do the math, used my guns. So he's basically saying he used my guns, that A so-and-so used my guns. He's insulting, he's criticizing uh, Farouk for using his guns as if he didn't give him his guns or as if he didn't condone the use of his guns. That's number one. Number two, he checked himself into a psych clinic yep. moments after. Does this guy get any slack, first of all, for calling 911 yeah. after the attack? Well, 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 look at the totality of the circumstances. He, he, he may. Uh, you know, if this goes to trial, I agree. He gets convicted. But I think it's all about, first of all, he accepted responsibility under the federal sentencing guidelines. That's a key factor. Uh, number two, there is a psychiatric condition here, which needs to be analyzed by, by the courts and by the attorneys. And, and the, the bottom line is you have the acceptance of responsibility. And he may have an argument. Look, you know, no attack was ever carried out in the past. I had no idea that they were going to carry out these attacks. So he may have some defenses built in that could mitigate his circumstances slightly. It's yeah. a stretch, though, David. Come on. I mean, look, those guns, oh. he actually lied on the application so that Farouk could get the guns. So he said, I'm going to get the guns for you. Lied on the application. That's one of the charges is the right. fact that he right. actually did bought them yeah. under these uh, but, unlawful but means. But Mercedes, under this federal sentencing guidelines, it's not a stretch. He's going to get points for acceptance of responsibility. He accepted responsibility from the moment he called 911, carried it through. Also cooperation because he cooperated for about 11 days with the Fed. Let's just talk about the defense because we know in the aftermath he did check himself into that right. psych clinic, okay? Uh, but the defense is gonna argue that this man wasn't actually capable of carrying out these attacks on his own. The concern though is given Marquez's health history, is he eligible? I mean, is he even fit to stand trial? That's a great point. I mean, certainly they're going to go before some psych and they're going to say, the defense is going to try to say, look, he's not, he's really not going to be able to withstand the trial. He's not, he doesn't understand how the trial proceeding is going to proceed, but I think there's going to be a stretch. I think that ultimately he's going to stand trial. And frankly, that psych court, I think that's more to do with stress. Yeah. I think he was so overwhelmed at right. what was coming down the pike at him. That's why he psyched it. Real quick, okay, I just want to talk about the charges here. Conspiring to provide material to support terrorists. Fraud and uh, misuse of visas, permits, and of other documents. Making a false statement in connection with the acquisition of firearms. I mean, this case needs to be used as a strong message and a warning to anyone else out there who's thinking about aiding a terrorist. What kind of conviction, what kind of sentence do you think this man deserves if he's found guilty? Well, he, he, I mean, yeah. he could be facing life. He could be any, anything from 10 to 15 years exactly. to life. And multiple, because there are three counts, right. 10 to 15 each, so we're talking the rest of his I life. I just think present. automatic but, life sentence, if but, you have any kind of terror ties, and, and if you're, and, a, if you're connected and to yeah. a terror attack that was actually played out, not uh, in the works, but actually played out. And under, led to the right. death of 14 people. All right, yeah. we got to go. Okay. Terrible.
All right, I'm sorry, we've run out of time. Thanks. Of course, we could talk about this for hours. Uh, we'll be right back, stay right there.